Well, we have been asking you to go get your voter card, but beyond that, are you also a member of a political party? If you are, are you between the ages of 18 to 40? I don't know what the age range is for young people these days. Uh, but I would safely say between the ages of 18 to 40. Are you a member of a political party? Do you intend to join? If you do, um, do you have a criteria for those who are aspiring for office? Have you been selected and delegate? What qualities would you be looking out for um, amongst the candidate amongst the aspirants who are going to be asking for votes at the convention this is some of the questions we're going to be asking this morning and right here in abuja studios i have with me mr timothy osadolo who is the deputy national youth leader of the people's democratic party you're welcome to sunrise daily this morning thank you thank you for having me i also have right here ibrahim farouk who is a program manager governance and development program with yaga africa and also the national coordinator of the not too young to run movement um, welcome to sunrise early this morning thank you Malte. and uh, right there in lagos we have with us mr abayomi oyalo who is a member of the all progressives congress good morning mr oyalo and welcome to sunrise daily Good morning, Mark. Where is Ayobami, not Abayomi? Ayobami, my apologies. And I that's exactly that. what was written, but I think I misread it. My apologies, Mr. Ayobami. Uh, let me start here, right here in our Abuja studios, and by asking you, Mr. Timothy Osadolo, because you are the Deputy National Youth Leader within the PDP. Um, I know that the convention is just a few days away, and uh, the, the aspirants, especially the presidential aspirants, have been going around to meet delegates um, who will be voting at the convention which is coming up. Um, what criteria? I do not know if you have been a delegate before. If you have been, can you confirm if you have been? Yeah. You have? Yes. When you were a delegate, what criteria were you looking out for amongst those who, ha who had come to woo you for your votes? Well, first and foremost, what you look out for is capacity competence and character there is because uh, if you lack these three C's I believe strongly that uh, it's either you're on the wrong boat or then you are doing something utterly different from the normal because what when you come outside for a particular position it is expected that you have your heads on your shoulders and you know what you are going for and you have capacity to deliver on that job or on the mandate which we are seeking for. Unlike what we have now, though sometimes we get deceived by people, by track records of people. Like what we have currently now in Nassau Rock, we, get mis we were misled by the antecedents and the uh, aura built around, the meat built around the personality we have there now. Mm. But time and uh, the uh, environment of office has exposed the fantastic flaw that he is. So, Going to this next convention and subsequent conventions, one will have to look, take a forensic look at those appearing before us mm -hmm. so that we we'll know what to do. So, the mistakes of the past, just like the Bible said, that affliction will never arise a second time, we will not commit ourselves into another shit hole like we are currently now. Capacity, competence, and character, three yeah. C's. I wonder whether this, these words mean the same thing in the political terrain. And I'm <laughs> I have to put that to you, um, Mr. Farouk, because you are the expert here on the governance and development. We haven't quite seen a development, I mean, over time, maybe in some areas where there's been some development, but overall, we know that we ought to be, where we are right now is not where we ought to be, especially when we talk about security, and unemployment, et cetera, et cetera. So these three C's are extremely important, but, you know, they would require a deeper definition, a, a clearer definition in terms of what sort of capacity we're looking for, what sort of character we're looking for, and what sort of competency we're looking for. Can you further define this for us? Um, thank you very much, Maupe. I, I, I totally agree. And when we talk about competence, for instance, um, it's, the, it's the ability to deliver. Um, are, are you able to 
say these are the promises uh, make those promises and actually follow through with them um, to also ask is there is there a track record that we can show and I think that also speaks a bit to capacity um, I, I think over time we've seen many um, individuals who want to run for public office and sort of just spring up from um, out of nowhere without a track record without um, some something to hold on to to say you know i have done this i have worked in my community um, i've participated either in the party um, or in civil society or in other some aspect of life and when we talk about character um, it's about seeing many different um, individuals who when when you do a deep dive um, into some of the things that they've been involved in in the past, um, for instance, it, it leaves you wondering um, whether these are the individuals that we want to have um, in public office. So I, I totally agree with the Deputy National Youth Leader um, around competence, character, um, and capacity. Um, but beyond just throwing those words around, it's a critical um, investigation into, into what those three words really mean. Well, I do not know, because you were leading a not-too-young-to-run movement, uh, national coordinator, and that was eventually passed into law, which was one of the good things. But there have been questions as to whether or not young people have now been schemed out. We, what we're seeing, uh, the cost of even consultations, uh, informal consultations, that is, and then the cost of uh, nomination, nomination forms. forms. Uh, that's another kettle of fish. But what, have, what are you saying in terms of the numbers of people who are going into you know, participate amongst the young? So I, I think that we're seeing um, a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of young people who are putting their, their, themselves forward to actually run for office. In 2015, um, when we looked at youth candidacy, we saw that it was about 21%. Um, but then in 2019, largely because of the not too young to run legislation that was passed, um, youth candidacy came up to about 34%. Uh, we are confident um, that we're going to see. Yes, or candidacy. Not, uh, it's very important to clarify that. Yes, youth, not, youth, youth candidacy. Not as, and, and that, yeah, that was not, those were aspirants. <laughs> those were post primaries. Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's very difficult to track the data around young people who are aspiring for office. Okay. Almost any Tom, Dick and Harry can design a poster and put it on Facebook and say I'm aspiring for office. But it's another kettle of fish um, for you to actually pick up a nomination form, engage with the delegates or whatever um, process that leads to candidate selection and emergence, and then finally be a candidate at the polls. Um, but I think that from what we are seeing, um, mm -hmm. there's huge interest. Um, young people um, are really interested in what is happening. I, I think there's a realization um, that our participation affects us in many different ways and unless young people are at those decision making tables um, the decisions that affect us we're not going to have any inputs in them let me flip this to Lagos to my colleagues uh, for the statement of uh, Mr. Oyalowo on this well thanks a lot Mark uh, just before that gentlemen I'd like to appeal that we watch our language and, and avoid vulgarities so we can have a fruitful conversation uh, but let me come to you Mr. Yellow. I know you're always quick to say you are exiting that young people bracket you're almost 50 now I'm 49 you're 49 there you go so but today you're still a young person even my father says it's young and he's well, all young eight. oh there you go so um, the, the, the conversation around young people is quite important I know that the focus is on the convention which is actually a major election before the main election a lot of people don't pay attention to it, but essentially the destiny of Nigerians is in your hands. I'm talking political parties. And by the way, are you a delegate in this coming election? No, I'm not a delegate. You're not a delegate. I was an aspirant who... Well, just go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what happened. It's okay. It. So the question is just how close to the decision table are young people, particularly in your political party, especially in the build-up to this convention? Okay, thank you very much. Um, young people have really uh, picked up the interest over the years. What we have tried to uh, advise them in the past, I think uh, they are listening now. You see, if you remember uh, in 2019, the moment the Not Too Young to Run bill was passed, rather than the young people looking at areas where they can really make a difference, everybody wanted to be president at that time, which for me was not a wise decision. However, this time we've had a lot of young people coming in to become, I mean, to, to run for offices such as state houses of assemblies, like we've explained, I mean, advised them, houses, uh, house of rep. Those are areas where young people can actually come in in large number. And then we must understand to be a delegate, there's a, a different, it's a different kettle of fish. One, in, in my own political party, you must, to be a statutory delegate, you must have held some offices in the past. And then you now, 
the, the other ones that are not uh, statutory, you will have to apply for that. Is By picking a small year, you have to be an elected delegate. Even so, though the Electoral Act doesn't recognize statutory just yet. Yeah, well, yes, I'm, I'm only explaining to you how it works. Yeah. For those ones, you will have to apply to be a delegate. I didn't apply to because I don't want to because I was an aspirant as, as at that time. However, you'll have to pick up a form very cheap. I think it's just 5000 so it's not a lot of money to become a delegate for certain categories. So for me... What, what categories are there? Uh, there? There are a lot of other areas. You can be a delegate in the uh, state assembly election, the governorship election. You can be a delegate in the, uh, in the uh, national election, which comprises of the House of Rep. Uh, Senate and the presidential. So they are all. They are not. All, they are not all the same thing. Each uh, category of delegate, you will have to pick where you want to belong to. Is there a, is there a criteria for being? A no, there is no other than that, just being. No, if you are if you are a card carrying member and you are interested, you pick the form for it. Anybody can pick the form. What for kind that. of education should the uh, delegates themselves have? Because as yeah, they, said, they, they are very critical. Like uh, uh, Okiki okay, Olu just said. Now there is something very critical about them. They present to you, the general electorate, whom you will choose. You see, like, uh, I think it's Governor Verified that used to say then that um, election is like a beauty contest. The most beautiful girl that doesn't come out cannot become the most beautiful girl in the contest. So if you are beautiful and you don't pick the form, you honestly cannot be reckoned with. Your beauty just remains in your house or wherever. So to, to narrow it down to election, as parent, of any category will depend on the delegates to become the candidate. Therefore, those who will be made delegates must understand that what they are doing is critical to the national uh, election in the long run because whoever they pick or choose automatically becomes the candidate of whatever party. Is there, they is there a mechanism in the APC, <coughs> excuse me, your own party, to ensure that the people who become delegates have, as um, I think Mr. Osarola said, have their heads screwed right in order to know the right person to choose well, for the job what, or what, to propose for the I, job? I, I don't know if you, if you call it a mechanism, but you, you try to educate people, letting them understand that uh, whatever you do, Whatever you decide will not just affect the destiny of your party, it will also affect the destiny of the nation. Because um, the candidates that elect, I mean, that emerges from aspiration and the primaries election automatically, and then you must also understand that aside from being delegate, let's not forget the fact that uh, the Constitution recognizes three forms of uh, uh, primaries. You have the we are talking about delegate now because we are all looking at indirect primaries now. Mm -hmm. But we have the direct primaries where every political party member who is duly registered can participate. Which is clearly not the direction you Which, are going for no, your party. No, uh, well, it, it will, well uh, they are all, they are, all options are open. But, Up to now, as we're speaking, so yeah, I think for the presidential election till today, nobody knows what is going to happen. Okay. It has not been picked. Ask, uh, Although everybody assumed that it is going to be the indirect primary. So we must understand that these things are there. You can do direct, you can do consensus. Some people have also said that that's what your, your party yeah. has always You can have consensus. Let, let, me, let me quickly ask No, no, don't forget that we had uh, direct in some elections in 2019. Okay. For instance, in picking the Lagos State President, I mean, governors, we, we went through this. Was, in, in, uh, was, was direct. So okay. that's what I'm saying. You must also understand that. Okay. So that is why party membership is actually more critical to this. Because if you are not a member, you can't even be a delegate. Okay, let, let me ask uh, Mr. Okay. Farouk uh, this question, especially concerning the Not Too Young to Run uh, movement. In the build-up to the uh, the Not Too Young to Run, activating the Not Too Young to Run um, law, one would expect that perhaps there should have been some measure of education, not just information, education to especially young people in, in, right now so that they know the various elements that go into the political process, not just voting, not just being members of, of political parties, but actually positioning themselves for office. Would you say that we have lost something there or we still have an opportunity in terms of that education? I would say we definitely still have an 
an opportunity. Um, and for us at the Not Too Young to Run movement, beyond just being a movement that successfully amended the constitution to increase um, youth representation, um, youth participation, and youth inclusion, um, there has been a lot of political education, a lot of civic education, a lot of raising consciousness um, among young people, especially about the political process around constitutional amendment, um, which was one of the things that we did. Um, I know the, the guests in the Lagos studio also made the very important point um, around political party membership. And for us, a, as a movement, um, we have also encouraged young people to register um, as members of political parties um, beyond just registering as members of political parties, also to ensure um, that you seek for leadership positions within those political parties, um, especially because young people holding leadership positions are able to represent the needs and the interests of young people in the party, and by extension, young people across, um, across the country. One of the things that I'm really glad about um, is that in the build up to the 2023 elections, um, we're also seeing a lot of information around how party systems and structures work, um, how delegates are selected. Um, there's an increased interest um, also from young people to participate as delegates. And I think this is an understanding, an increased understanding um, around the very important role that political parties play as that vehicle, as that mechanism um, towards getting on the ballot. Um, and, and, and I can assure you um, that in, across all the various political parties, uh, we're going to see many more young people um, as delegates um, for the various primaries as, as they begin from this weekend especially, and leading up to the, to the conventions and the presidential primaries. And this is a reflection of the fact um, that coming from the work from the Not Too Young to Run movement, from other youth organizations within political parties, outside political parties, um, recognizing that importance of the participation of young people. Um, I, I think that in a, in a few weeks um, after the primaries, um, when we go back uh, and, and we're telling the stories, we're going to be seeing um, how young people influence those processes. Mr. Sadalo, my question is for you. In, in the run-up to the Not Too Young to Run movement, the argument was that let's give young people an opportunity in the leadership space that perhaps they can make a difference and bring about the ideal leadership qualities that Nigeria needs to realize her full potential. And after that, you know, I think the statistic says that we now have about 6.8% of young people in parliament, both from federal level and across state parliaments. So given that figure, what difference have young people, young legislators brought to the table since election in uh, 2019? Well, uh, the political process is large, active, and uh, upwardly mobile. And I can tell you, since uh, this is young, uh, not too young to run bill came into effect, that uh, youths and uh, young people, particularly like under that uh, bracket, have tremendously increased their participation in the political space. And um, they have been very active so far, though we have also had some minuses in some of the uh, persons that have uh, benefited from it, but the overriding uh, majority have been playing their own role and their own quotas, and they will look forward to maximizing the gains that are open for us to maximize in the, in the political space as youths. Because if you don't engage the youths in these processes at this yeah. early age, when they become old, I wonder at when, when the experience that is required over, the ta over time will be accumulated and uh, maximized. You see, it's like the catching them, is, it is like a school, in the, in the end, if you come in early as a youth, you learn on the job, that's the advantage, and more so, the energy you bring in is, and the vibes you bring, the positive vibes you also bring in makes all of these processes tweak and work better for the general populace. Because even Nigeria itself, 45% of the population of this country, boys and girls, or the youth category, are within the age of 40 down below. So you cannot ignore such a, 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 a class of people, knowing that these people will be around for the next 50 to 60 years. So you can't just wish them away. So it's good that uh, this bill was passed, and the gains that they have made so far is encouraging, 
are promising. You say it's a large space, uh, and let's look at you know the, the federal parliament, for instance, where there's the talk about ranking their senior legislators and all of that. And if you compare that with our cultural ethos in the country, do you think that uh, their expression, you know, the um, platform for, of expression for young people, has been limited by the fact that they're intimidated by the older uh, legislators in parliament? Well, the thing is this: power is not uh, is not is not is not uh, given away as freebies. You must you must come and ask for it. If young people didn't have a platform to ask for it, if prior to uh, did not you too young to run bill, that has been corrected now. We cannot participate in the processes. Like in my home state of Edo, the speaker of my state is not even 40, and is coming to the House of Reps. If God will, if he scales through the general elections. Now, if such a person gets re-elected and elected, the issue of ranking will also apply to him. Now, these old people that uh, are, are in this political space, you don't expect them to just disappear all of a sudden if you don't take the fight politically to them, not physically, as in an ideological battle like you have contributed, you are at your peak, and you are not your diminishing, diminishing moment. Let these people with bright, fresh ideas also come in. Though most of them are still good and uh, intellectually mobile, but we know that generally the, the, the National Assembly, which we are talking about particularly now, some of our elites see it as a playground for, for them where they go to take their pension and retire. It, it ought not to be so. Mm. It ought not to be so. It's not a playground for adults. It, indeed, and it ought not to be. I mean, I think a lot of people will agree with you on that. I just want to ask you, uh, talking about competence, uh, you talked about how uh, young people need to take over so that they can learn on the job. But some people will argue that where we are right now, it's not a place for people to come and learn on the job. They need to already have some experience to know what to do when they get there. <clears throat> for those who are aspiring for office or those who will seek to aspire in future, how would you advise them to garner this experience so that when eventually they get the chance to be in office, they can actually deliver uh, or hit the ground running, as we like to say here? Well, first and foremost, nobody runs isolatedly. You run on the party's platform. And every serious political party has a manifesto or should have a party manifesto where the candidates with their own manifesto should um, marry their own personal manifesto with that of the party and run along with it, supposedly. You see, uh, the fact that the system we are in doesn't place emphasis on what the manifestos are prior to now. It is now that Nigerians are now asking questions. We are becoming woke and asking, what do you bring to the table? What does your party bring to the table? You see, that is part of the political evolution process that is ongoing now. Prior to now, we will just say, ah, Bab uh, Babajide is running. Hey, I like Babajide. He's a rich man. Oh, I like Babajide. Are your sentiments man. still very prevalent? Not, not, not as it was before. Now, people want to see what your track records are, what you have done with positions you've been given to before. They want to also see what you, your talking points are mm. going forward into the next phase of elections. Would, would you subscribe to a school for leadership for young people who seek political office? 100%. I subscribe to it wholeheartedly. Because it is uh, the much you have that reflects in what you give. It is not, there is no rocket science about it. If leadership is not, uh, is not uh, something you sleep and you wake up into, you must build yourself into it. So if there's going to be a leadership school or where people go for uh, uh, refresher courses or fresh courses, it's a welcome development. Mm. We've seen quite a few spring up. I mean, uh, we've seen one in Kaduna. We've also seen one in Lagos. We do not have enough of these types no. of schools. Uh, would you advise, what exactly should we be doing to ensure that leadership is, well, because well, we we've all talked about how leadership is, is the bane of our development. Um, you, how do you think we can ensure that many more of these schools, credible schools, are, are brought to bear in a place where we're in dire need of leadership? 
Uh, Mapa, I think this is a very interesting conversation because um, I think ideally um, political parties should set up leadership schools um, because political parties, like I mentioned, um, are responsible for leadership selection, um, so to speak. However, we've seen um, with many political parties where it is an all commas affair, um, whether you have any sort of leadership skills mm -hmm. or not. Um, and and this, is, this is calling out the political parties um, to say it, it is not enough to just have an all commas affair or to say yes we subscribe to the motion, notion of a leadership school um, there's the office of the youth leader the office of the deputy national youth leader who can propose these kind of innovative ideas within the parties so that young people within the parties go through this leadership process and when you get to the point of that question around are you ready or do you have any experience or or, or do you have what it takes to be a leader um, you're able to eliminate all of those questions because you have gone through that we leadership have to be process careful, though, because but, I mean, but, we, we have a pension to acquire certificates but it's still leadership school be, yeah. I'm happy. maybe just to add another thing that we've seen and especially for young people is saying oh you have no experience um, but if 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 you look at many um, young people who are currently in leadership positions started from either student union government mm -hmm. or some kind of community association where they were either maybe a president or some in some sort of leadership role and and that that helped them to build um, that leadership potential and that leadership capacity mm -hmm. and transmit it um, into public office right now and you we know that student union uh, unionism sometimes is something that a lot of students do not want to go into especially if you know you want to graduate on time so you know there have been questions around it's very much the same way many people in the private sector treat politics and i mm -hmm. think that they that that mentality is passed down to even those in the universities if given that, that that's how uh, our leaders are produced and that is the socialization process we have for young people i mean uh, don't we have a problem here this question is for you um mr yellow how that is a problem from student unionism, yeah, maybe it, it could be like a stepping stone for you to uh, begin to learn how to manage people because uh, as a student union leader, you are clearly uh, managing your peers in school. So you can, uh, we've seen a few student union leaders who have grown to become uh, great leaders in the political space and we've seen some who have refused to outgrow they are childish ways of to, because student unionism could be childish at times the kind of a looter mentality that never leaves you and clearly in life politics is not just about a looter you must learn all, all manner of dynamics because you're dealing with a different set of human beings so yes student unionism could be a catalyst or a stepping stone to leadership in the original i mean the real life space mm. and it could also be an inhibition depending on the individual and let's speak to the transitioning now from student mm. unionism to party politics because sure. that's where a lot of the action happens you are a member of the apc perhaps from the onset and uh, i mean you've talked about how you also have a job on social media i think i used to with the uh, cbn owned nurse uh, I, I left for now oh you left I for left now like but, but how how are you handling it i mean doing a job because young people aren't the fastest or quickest uh, to join well, political the, the parties the thing with people is we have made politics to look like a vocation which is wrong i've always said people should uh, learn to have a job not become a professional politician many, many people are professional politicians and this is where the challenge is. Because when politics becomes your only vocation, then it's a uh, do or die affair for you. It's a matter of life and death for you. But when people actually have something they are doing, politics becomes a way of service to the community, to the people. Now, this is what 1999 has brought upon us. It has dumped on us a system where people have come to uh, abuse politics. Is it the constitution or the uh, political system? The, the entire thing, from the constitution, from the way the politics was, I mean, because of the rushed uh, uh, transition, because of what had happened with Babangida deceiving people, when the time came for the proper handover, everybody was scared. Maybe it's another Maradonic uh, uh, way people didn't get involved. Most of those who got involved are not supposed to be in politics. Unfortunately, the waters have been polluted today. Till today, you're till, saying? Till today, it, it, it's a carryover. A lot of them are your party, by the way. Forget what, where, what party. This is not about party. Let's not make it about APC. I don't want to, I want to talk about Nigeria now, except you want me to do politics, then I'll start politics with you here. But clearly, we've had a challenge where people who held power 
from the beginning of uh, uh, this current set of politics have made it so difficult for new entrants to come in, in the sense that even from ordinary party primaries, the kind of money that goes into it, you, you must have to have committed a crime somewhere to be able to uh, 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 raise Absolutely. such money. And it is across party. Let's not make this about my party now. It is a challenge where we need to find a balance between, yes, you must have money, no doubt about it, but it has to be reasonable. And that is where we are talking about people having jobs, having businesses, having vocation, having trade before they come into politics so sounds that they have like, something so, to do. Sounds like you're saying that the, the young people have been blocked out. They are not mm -hmm. blocked out if they know what they, to do. The advantage of the young people is that they are in numbers. If they actually come into these parties in numbers, or maybe create a new party, but it's going to be very difficult creating a new party. But the existing ones are there for the taking, if the young people actually have a strategy in place. Not strategy of running around, not strategy of hitting themselves from but the back. You know excuse me, young people are not, <coughs> excuse me, young people are not usually that patient. That is where the patient must come in. I forgot this lady's name, I've been trying to remember her name. If you remember what happened in the last uh, uh, American election, a lady that, 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 that took 10 years to build a system that helped a state that has never been Democrat become Democrat. It takes a while. It takes a well, lot well, of we're patience. Talking about transition. So you must learn that patience. If you are not patient, you will get nothing. We're talking mm -hmm. about transition. I'd like to, you to speak to how it leads to you know, a stepping stone for young people to get uh, visible in politics. How much of mentoring uh, can aid a young person to become you know, something yeah, mentoring, it's or a, somewhere a, mentoring is a, it's, it's a great idea. I mean, you look at a man like uh, Rotimi Amechi, for instance, he was mentored by somebody who brought him in as his PA. He became a speaker of the, of the State House of Assembly in River State. Before he became the governor today, he's running for president. So it could be positive if you are two things. You have a proper leader who will actually groom you. You have uh, uh, your own mindset is, is right. I mean, you can also look at people like uh, Baba... Baba uh, Raji Fashola, the Minister of Works, who was also groomed by an Ashwaju. Today, he's one of the best leaders we have in Nigeria. I mean, we, I remember just a few weeks ago, uh, I think which state brought him to come and be a resource person to speak to their, their, their political uh, uh, appointees and everybody. So you could have the positive. Then you could also have the negative. A, a, I don't want to call his name, but he said he was a presidential aspirant last election. Who was, uh, he's, uh, he, was, uh, in the, he was a student union activist then, but he refused to outgrow that mentality. So it could be positive, it could be negative. It depends on a lot of things. You have a proper leader, and then you have a right mindset to grow. Because what happens in the university world is entirely different from the real world. So you must be able to gravitate and outgrow that childishness from the university where everything is, we must break, we must scatter, to understand that you must manage emotions, manage people, manage ego, manage all manner of things. So it depends on you and the kind of leaders you have around you. I guess that's where character comes in. Indeed, uh, let me quickly, as we wrap up now, let me quickly ask Mr. Sodolo, in 30 seconds, if you can, will you can speak to delegates who are going to be voting at this, um, at the convention, at the upcoming convention of your party in, at the state and also at the national level? Well, I would only speak to delegates in my party. I'll speak to delegates across all parties. Mm -hmm. In these forthcoming elections, think about your future. Think about your children, think about your security of your life, think about the economy of this country, and look at all the candidates before you and pick those one you think will best deliver on all of these issues that bothers every Nigerian. Because the Nigeria of today is not the Nigeria of our dreams. So let's look for a candidate, irrespective of Naira and Kobo. Naira and Kobo should not play a determining role in who you are going to vote for. He may, give, he may give you as much as 50 million naira or 100 million or even uh, or the whole world in, in naira or in dollars or in whatever currency. Please, if you need it, receive it, but ensure, in the name of God, I beg you, ensure you vote that candidate that you believe and you know in your heart of hearts can deliver as a president when he emerges. That is what we need. I like that advice. <laughs> I know that's going to be a bit controversial, but, you know, 
that's where we'll have to leave the conversation. Farouk, I've asked you for your closing comments, but we're totally out of time. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. I've been speaking uh, to Timothy Osadolo, who is the Deputy National Youth Leader of the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Ibrahim Farouk is the Program Manager, Governance and Development Program, Yaga Africa, and also the National Coordinator of the Not Too Young to Run Movement. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And over in Lagos, we... Have, we, we're speaking with Mr. Ayobami Oyalowo, who is a member of the All Progressives Congress. Gentlemen, once again, thank you so much for coming to this conversation this morning.